There's been a lot of puzzlement as to why Israel seems to have withdrawn almost all of its troops from Gaza, effectively just over the last weekend. The drawdown of troops has certainly been fairly dramatic. In December, the Israeli Defense Forces had 18 brigades in Gaza. That's about 90,000 troops. A month ago, they were down to five brigades, and over the weekend, the Airborne Division, they moved out, and now there's only one brigade there. And so this one brigade, they're on their own there now, and they're actually looking after the, the new crossing point. It's called Route uh, 749. The, the Israelis drove from the Israeli border right through to the coast. It cuts Gaza in half. And that brigade now, they're called the Nahal Brigade, the Infantry Brigade, they're looking after that route. So nobody is in Khan Yunus, nobody is near Rafa. It's a quite astonishing disappearance, really, of Israeli troops. It's not clear quite what the thinking is behind this dramatic withdrawal. There is a tactical reason for it, because the troops that were there do need to be rested. Some of them have been fighting for four months, and four months on operations is a very long time for individual troops. So the 98th Airborne uh, Division, when that was withdrawn over the weekend, that makes sense, but not to replace them with another division. That was a curious uh, uh, thing to do. There may be a political issue behind this because clearly, for political reasons, the IDF are not going to attack Rafa anytime soon. That is at least some weeks away, maybe further than that. And of course, it may create a degree of political pause in which the peace talks going on in Cairo might, might begin to bear some fruit and from Israel's point of view, uh, bring the hostages home. I think the reason all this has happened now is because of the build-up of political pressure from the outside. The United States has been clearly running out of patience with uh, Israel in its persistence in pushing f constantly forward and creating so many civilian deaths. The Europeans too have been really putting pressure on Israel to think again about the strategy. And last week Joe Biden made a phone call to Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, and undoubtedly that was a very, very tough phone call. And he was saying, you know, our, our continued support for you militarily will not be guaranteed unless you change tactics. And within hours the Israelis had said, we're pulling some troops out, we're opening more aid corridors, we will allow the, the northern crossing, the Erez crossing to be opened and so on. Lots of things changed as a result of one phone call from Joe Biden. Everyone is deciding that after six months, this conflict has got to be reviewed. The Israelis are talking about it, the outside world is talking about it, because clearly, after six months, Israel has not succeeded in its objectives. It has not destroyed Hamas, it has not occupied the whole of Gaza, it has not got the hostages back, and in some respects, things are getting worse. But there is a sense in which, if Israel does not change tactics, then this war will become something like a forever war and it will only then get worse. And so I think that the, the troop withdrawal is part of a more general sense that after six frantic, hectic, destructive and murderous months that began on October the 7th with the atrocities that Hamas committed, and we should never forget that, that after six months the world has got to take stock of what can be achieved if we can somehow bring this conflict to a pause and think about the day after. They always say it's the day after question. What happens the day after the fighting stops? Well, nobody has got any clear ideas yet for what realistically could happen on the day after. So maybe uh, this week will be the beginning of some more constructive discussions about what the day after might look like.